Ads heard before, during, or after the podcast are not endorsed by Church of the Undead or myself unless voiced by me personally. All other ads are pre-recorded, inserted by ad agencies, and are not in my control. In Acts 20, verses 29 and 30, Paul writes, I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will rise, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Paul here is speaking to the early church, and to us, about cults. Cults will not only come, they are already here, and have been all along in some way, shape, or form. They existed then, they exist now, and they will exist in the future until the Lord does away with evil once and for all. But that's a topic for another day. The really dangerous part about cults is how attractive they can be to even the most intelligent among us. Even those of us who profess Christ as our Savior can be lured in if we're not careful. Cults, in all of their forms, draw us away from the truth. So it's important to recognize one when you see it. Hello, Weirdos! I'm Pastor Darren. Welcome to the Church of the Undead. Here in the Church of the Undead, I can share ideas which are relevant to those who suffer with depression, need some encouragement, and for those who love or are just curious about the God of the Bible. And it doesn't matter if you are a weirdo in Christ or just a weirdo, everybody's welcome here at the Church of the Undead. And I use the word undead because here we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. If you want to join this weirdo congregation, just click that subscribe or follow button and visit us online at WeirdDarkness.com slash church. Full disclosure, I might use the term pastor because I've branded this feature as a church, but I do not have a theology degree, nor did I ever go to Bible college. I'm just a guy who gave his life to Christ in 1989 and has tried to walk the walk ever since, and has stumbled a lot along the way. Because, like everybody else, I am an imperfect, heavily flawed human being. So please don't take what I say as gospel. Dig into God's Word yourself for confirmation, inspiration, and revelation. That being said, welcome to the Church of the Undead. One quick note before we begin. The term cult, as expressed in the English language, can be used in both secular, that is, non-religious, and also religious settings. For example, the singer's cult of fans, or the film has a cult following. Today, we are going to concentrate on religious cults, defined by Dictionary.com as great veneration of a person, ideal, or thing, especially as manifested by a body of admirers, a religion or sect considered to be false, unorthodox, or extremist, with members often living outside of conventional society under the direction of a charismatic leader. So, that being said, the following characteristics will help us define and recognize the nature of a cult. First, the most dastardly, insidious mark of a cult is that it ignores or distorts the gospel of Jesus Christ. To one degree or another, all cults deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Their teachings and principles will eventually leave a person unsaved without a relationship with Jesus Christ and spending eternity in hell. The Bible teaches that faith in Christ plus nothing else equals salvation. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 reads, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. The most obvious cults today are Jehovah's Witnesses and the Watchtower Society. They put good works in place of nothing else, suggesting the redeeming work of Jesus is not sufficient by itself. Faith plus anything else is heresy. This characteristic of cults is so significant that Paul literally pronounces a curse as he shares his displeasure and outright anger at these false prophets who minimize, distort, or change the gospel. Galatians 1 verses 6 through 9 says, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. 
But even though we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to that which you received, let him be accursed. Again, Galatians 1 verses 6 through 9. Please note that the word Paul uses for curse is the strongest word for cursing in the Greek language. Technically, it dooms the one who is cursed to the darkest, deepest, most horrible fate imaginable. Second, most cults are led by a dynamic, charismatic leader who eventually controls and manipulates his or her followers. Jim Jones, the perfect example. He was a psychopathic, manipulative, controlling, and insidious leader. He founded the People's Temple in Indiana during the 1950s. Jim began moving to different cities, gaining followers at each one. In the mid-1970s, he relocated all of his followers to Guyana on the northwest coast of South America. Then, in 1978, rumors began to circulate, alleging that human rights abuses were occurring in the People's Temple. United States Congressman Leo Ryan went to investigate. Ryan and several defectors were murdered by gunfire while boarding a return flight home. Shortly thereafter, Jones led all of his 918 followers, including 304 children, to commit suicide by drinking Kool-Aid spiked with cyanide. Actually, punch, not Kool-Aid the brand. That's a misnomer. Jones was a brash overlord who enslaved his followers, ultimately leading to their deaths. In contrast, True Christian leaders are humble. Jesus described himself as meek and lowly in heart, Matthew 11, verse 29. Paul mentored Timothy as a pastor and church leader in two of his letters. In 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 4, Paul described a godly leader, saying, Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. Third, surprisingly, most cult leaders grew up in a Christian environment. Sun Myung Moon, founder of the Unification Church, grew up in a Presbyterian home. Jim Jones attended a Nazarene church. Later, he pastored a Disciples of Christ congregation before founding the People's Temple. Moses David, David Berg, founder of the Children of God, he's the son of evangelistic parents and served as a minister in a Christian and Missionary Alliance church. Mary Baker Patterson Glover Eddy, founder of the Christian Scientists, and Charles Taze Russell, founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, were both raised in Christian homes and churches. Obviously, there are many reasons why cult leaders turn from Christianity. I'd guess that some imagined hearing a voice from God telling them that they were divinely inspired to begin something new. Some were deceived by demonic promptings. Others were simply arrogant con men or con women who knew just enough Bible to get everything confused. Many were arrogant, grandiose people whose pride led them to destruction. Fourth, cult leaders tend to ignore, confuse, add to, and or demean the Bible's teachings. It is easy to trap Christians when cultists speak Christian language. This is why churches need to teach the Bible early and definitively, this is why new Christians need mentors. Occasionally, the media draws our attention to a leader who counts up biblical numbers and is convinced that he or she knows the date of Christ's second coming. I recall one such group in southern Arizona that was identified as a second coming cult. This particular cult leader went to the Bible, added up a few dates, and declared that he had figured out the exact time and day of our Lord's return. Never mind Matthew 24, verse 36. Cults like his spring up occasionally. He convinced his followers to sell all their possessions because they would no longer need them after Christ's return. Jesus didn't return on his time. The cult dissipated quickly, 
Most had nothing to show for it except some clothes in a closet. Like all cult leaders, this man demeaned the truth of the scriptures. Jesus said that only God the Father knows the day and time of his return. That is Matthew 24, 36. Fifth, cults use devious methods to trap, deceive, and control their followers. In an article entitled The Power Abusers, Ronald N. Roth demonstrates some of the tools used by cults to control their members. First, there's behavior control. An individual's associations, living arrangements, food, clothing, sleeping habits, finances, etc. are strictly controlled. Then there's information control. Cult leaders deliberately withhold or distort information, lie, propagandize, and limit access to sources of information. There's thought control. The cult leader will use loaded words and language, discourage critical thinking, bar any speech that's critical of the leader or policies, and teach an us-versus-everybody-else doctrine. And then there's the emotional control. Leaders manipulate their followers via fear, including the fear of losing salvation or the fear of being shunned if they walk away or disbelieve, that kind of thing. Personally, I know of one freshman college student who fell into a cult led by a man named Brother David. She had been to church all of her life, but she became entrapped by both his teachings and personal guidance. She wrote, Brother David, that's not his real name, Brother David pastored a wildly demonstrative congregation, and people prophesied over me twice a week. I didn't need to listen to God anymore. My fellow followers told me exactly what to do and what not to do. I had this gnawing feeling growing deep inside that God was mad at me all the time. I felt that I had disappointed Jesus if I were not fasting and reading the Bible constantly. I withdrew from friends and family, dismissing them as carnal and deceived. Fasting, at this guy's suggestion, the woman reached 89 pounds before her parents and boyfriend succeeded in finally wrenching her free. Unfortunately, she was kind enough to tell Brother David why she was leaving. He told her she could go to hell. Sixth, people join cults for a number of reasons. Some look at the level of religious mediocrity they see all around them, and they find cults more attractive, as they tend to be more demanding. Others are looking for a new or deeper spiritual experience. We Christians can be uh, guilty of this when we start church shopping, looking for a better experience or a place that we feel more at home or just that we like better. We'll listen to an attractive personality and admire their reputation for superior godliness. Still others are attracted to authoritarian movements that offer black and white clear-cut answers or systematic approaches to life's problems. Some crave a message that seems to support their own beliefs and desires. We Christians are very guilty of that, too. Many lived through a church split, and they were hurt and disillusioned. They swore they would never return. And then they were exposed to a cult that seemed fresh and new, and they were ripe for conversion. Paul calls out all of these motives in 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. One other group is especially vulnerable, young Christians who get confused about the truth. And I don't mean young in age, I mean young in the faith. No matter what age you accept Christ in, that makes you a young Christian. Ephesians 4 verse 14 says, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. So how do we avoid being seduced by cult leaders and teachings? Well, first and foremost, we need to study scripture in order to know true doctrine and biblical teaching. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. I heard once that people in the Secret Service, they study real dollar bills in order to know the fake ones. They don't study the fake ones, they study the real ones. If you know the real dollar bills inside and out, exactly how they're supposed to be, 
It's easy to identify a false one when it comes around. The same works for Scripture. Know the true doctrine, know your Bible, and it'll be a lot easier to tell if a cult is coming your way. Second, don't forget or ignore what you've already learned. 2 Peter 1 verses 12 and 13 says, Peter, knowing that his days were numbered, reminded his readers of those truths which they had already learned. Don't forget what you've already learned just because you like the sound of this new thing that comes your way. Three, develop a consistent and committed walk with Christ. Grow up. Colossians 2 verse 6, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. 4. Consciously pray and practice the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now, that sounds weird. I'm not talking about dancing in the aisles, barking like a dog, speaking in tongues. That's not what I mean. Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Essentially, that just means continue walking with Jesus all the time. Always keep in mind what He would want for you. What, what you're thinking, what you're doing, uh, the plans that you make. Always just stay in prayer. If Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. 5. Before leaving the house in the morning, Put on your spiritual armor. Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and pray in the spirit. And six, use James 4 verse 7 as needed for spiritual warfare. James 4, 7 says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's a good verse just to memorize and have at the back of your head anytime you need it. James 4, 7, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, maybe you know somebody who is in a cult. How do you deprogram somebody out of that? Well, first and foremost, you don't want to do it yourself. Uh, unless you've got training in that. You want to find a spiritual leader that you know and trust to take the reins, or you can ask for help from a professional Christian counselor. I looked online to see if I could find somewhere that might help, and one place you could begin is starting a chat with a counselor for free at JustAnswer.com. That's JustAnswer.com. But we need to recognize the power of prayer and our dependence on the Holy Spirit for healing of this person. Since the damage was done in a relational context, healing must also take place in a healthy, safe relationship. You can use the scriptures and take your time to help the individual identify their cult's particular biblical distortions in a safe setting. And avoid criticizing, conf uh, confrontation, and arguing. That's going to put them on the defense, or the you know, defensive, that is, and they're not going to want to listen to anything you have to say. Do everything in love and respect. As often as possible, give this person an infusion of truth about who God is and how He sees us. And as they slowly emerge to freedom, connect them with a healthy church, one that you know is not a cult. And again, I just want to reiterate, do it or don't do it yourself unless you've got that training. The website is justanswer.com. And I have placed a link to that in the episode description. If you like what you heard, share this episode with others who you think might also like it. Maybe the person you share it with will want to join this weirdo congregation too. To join this weirdo family yourself, find us on Facebook, listen to previous messages, even find out how to join me in my daily Bible studies, visit WeirdDarkness.com slash church. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash church. You can find the sources I used for this week's message in the show notes. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me, weirdos, and until next time, Jesus loves you, and so do I. God bless. <laughs>